Panel. Everyone, welcome to my video tutorial for spatial data analysis. Today, I'm going to show you how to analyze the within Murphy's mouse spring receptor data set using the threat package. First, we can load the threat package, and also we set the seed. Then we can repeat the analysis using the same code. So you can download the Within Murphy's mouse brain receptor dataset from the Within website. So let's have a look at the dataset on Within website. You can see this is the Murphy's mouse brain receptor map dataset. If you scroll down, you can see here it performed the Murphy's spatial data analysis on three different mouse brain slides. So each slice has three repeat. So we are going to use slice two, replicate one for today's demonstration. Then we can click the access to see the data in S2R1. To analyze the data set using threat package, you need to download the old files in the cell boundaries and the CSV file for cells by gene and the cell matter data, also the detected transcripts CSV file. For the analysis using threat package, you don't need to download the images. So I downloaded the other data you can see in my file. S two R one. We have the cell boundaries, cell by genes, cell metadata, and the detected transcripts. So here is my R code that I'm going to run today. So now we can go to R and perform the analysis. So we can use the node within function in the thread package to load the data and create a within object for today's demonstration. Let's run the node within function. You can see we specified the files directory. All the files are in my S2R1 folder. Then we named the folder view as S2R1. Because we are going to know the order cell boundaries, if you have a look at that folder, it has more than 1,200 files. So it will take some time to know the data and create the within object. Okay, we loaded the data and created the within object. You can see in the data windows, we have a region object. We can click the object and have a look at the data. So you can see in this data set, we have 483 genes and more than 83,000 cells. You can see we have the six. In the six, we have the count. So we can use the count for each gene to perform the cell clustering. So this is the next step of analysis. So first, uh, we can perform the SC transform to normalize the data, identify highly reliable genes, and also scale the data. So let's run the SC transform analysis. Following the SC transform analysis, we can run PCA to perform the linear dimensional reduction. Because we only have 483 genes here, 
even we identify the highly variable genes in the SC transform analysis, but we are going to set the features as row names. That means we are going to use all the gene names as features to run PCA. So we can run PCA now. So after PCA, we can run UMAP. In the UMAP step, we perform non-linear dimensional reduction analysis. After UMAP analysis, we can compute a neighborhood graph for this data set. You can see it is computing the nearest neighbor graph. So now we can run find the clusters, cluster the cells. So you can see from the analysis, we identified 22 cell clusters in this data set. Now we can use the DIM plot to look at the cell clusters. Let's run DIM plot. So you can see in the plot window, we generated the UMAP for 22 cell clusters in this data set. So now we clustered the cells. Because this is a spatial data set, then we can use the image dim plot function to look at the cell clusters on the spatial coordinators. We can run this function. Let's zoom in. So you can see the localization for 22 cell clusters on the brain slice. Because we have 22 cell clusters here, so it is very hard to look at the localization for individual cell clusters. So we can actually plot individual cell clusters. We can set the cluster identity for the cluster that you want to look. For example, first we can plot the cluster array. Then in the second plot, we can plot the cluster 6. So let's plot the first plot, then second plot. Then we can visualize them together for cluster 3 and cluster 6. Let's run. You can see we generated a two spatial plot. Left image show the spatial coordinators for cluster 3, and the right hand side image show the spatial coordinators for cluster 6. You can see they localize in distinct region for different cell clusters. So we generated the, the cell clusters, and also we can visualize the cell clusters on spatial coordinators. Next, we can visualize the gene expression in different cell clusters. For example, we can use the image feature plot to plot the gene SLC17A7, it is expressed in the neurons. Let's run it as plot one. And also, we can use image DIM plot, then set the molecules argument as gene name to realize the localization of individual genes on the spatial coordinators. Then we can run this one as Plot 2. Now we can realize them together for the localization of Chin SLC 17A7. So you can see we generated the plot. Let's zoom in to see the image. You can see on the left hand side, it shows the expression level of 
SLC-1787 in the neurons of the mouse brain. You can see by the red color, SLC-1787 is highly expressed in the neurons. On the right-hand side the image, it shows the localization of SLC-1787 in the neurons, and at the same time, we can visualize other cell clusters. So here we show the expression and the localization of individual genes. We can also realize the co-expression of multiple genes. For example, in the first plot, we can co realize the molecules SLC1787. It is expressed in the neurons. Then we can realize the second gene, oligo 1. It is expressed in the oligodendrocyte. Let's make the first plot. In the second plot, we can identify mark genes for individual cell clusters. For example, we can use the find the markers function to identify mark genes for the cluster 14. Let's identify the mark genes first. You can see we have a data frame here. We identified 355 genes as the mark genes for cluster 14. Then we can make a second plot to show the top four mark genes on the spatial coordinators. Let's make the second plot. Now we can realize the first and the second plot. So we generated the plot. Let's zoom in again. You can see now on the left hand side, the image show expression CLC 17A7 and Oligo uh, 1, SLC 17 7 is in red, then Oligo uh, 1 expression is in blue. So you can see they don't uh, show co expression because the first one is expressed in neurons, then Oligo 1 is expressed in oligodendrocyte. In the second image, on the right hand side, we show top four mark genes for the canaster 14. Because they are top four mark genes for canaster 14, canaster 14 is the hippocampal neurons. Then you can see they are highly expressed in the hippocampal neurons. So here on the image, we have more than 83,000 cells. It is very hard to see the individual cells. Then we can crop the region that uh, you are interested in and then look at the individual cells in that region. So first, we can run the image dim plot again to see the axis. Here we set the axis as two. Let's run. So you can see in the image. We have the label for the y-axis and the x-axis. Then we can select a region by the y-axis and the x-axis. For example, we want to select one of the region for the hippocampus. Then we can crop this area. You can see here we set the x between 1750 to 3000, and the y axis is 3750 to 5250. Then we can crop this area and name it as cropped coordinators. So we can use the crop function to select that region. We can run. So now we can set the cropped coordinators as a new field of view in this vision object, and we name it as HIPPO.
because we are going to heal the hippocampal region. So let's set it. And also we can set the default boundary for the hippocampal region to heal cell segmentations. So now we can realize the cropped area use the image dim plot function again. So now the field of VO will be the hippo. We set it for the cropped area. So let's run the realization function. Okay, you can see we generated the spatial coordinators for the cropped region. You can see this is the left side of the hippocampus region. Now you can see individual cells in this region. Because we can see the individual cells on the spatial coordinators now, then we can replot the gene expression in this cropped area. You can see here we are going to use the image dim plot function again. And the field view will be the hippo. Then we can set the molecules as SLC 17A7 and Olig 1 for the demonstration. If we run this function, we should generate the spatial coordinators to see the SLC 17A7 and Olig 1 expression in individual cells. You can see we generated the figure. SLC 17A7 is highly expressed in the neurons in the hippocampus. Then, Olig 1 is in blue color. It is expressed in the oligodendrocyte. Okay, that's today's demonstration. I showed you how to analyze the spatial data set generated by the Vision Murphy technology. This video is for our users. In my next video tutorial, I'm going to use the same data set and make a video for Python users. If you are interested in the analysis in Python using the SquidPy, I hope to see you in my next video tutorial.